Okay. Do you want me to restart? Like, fresh? Okay. So, we're Team Uku. I'm Brianna. I'm Just Garn. And I'm Chai. And we're first going to start off with just a little bit of a reminder about what Uku is. So, it's a mobile respiration tracking system. Uh, it collects data and sends it over Bluetooth through mo to a mobile uh, application on your phone. And the data that it collects is on oxygen, carbon dioxide, and activity levels. So our motivation for the UKU math stems from Dr. Brown of the UC Davis Medical Center. Uh, so she's a thoracic surgeon and she doesn't have the best method of completing risk assessment for her patients before she uh, does surgery for lung resection on them. Uh, so she sometimes uses current VO2 max machines. Uh, and this is an example of one right here, as you can see. There's like a lot of stuff going on, a lot of tubes and everything. Um, it's not something you can do at your leisure. You have to go to a certain location for it. Uh, so she wanted something that she can test in her office and that she can use any level of exertion to test her patients because for a lot of her patients, they can't run. Uh, because they already need a lung resection. So, yeah. So this is our final mask design. Uh, we have the mask, we're just not passing it around because we don't want anything to happen to it. Um, so our PCV and battery are placed on the back of the mask um, in a little pocket. Um, and then that connects to the front where a CO2 sensor is in the front and center. That's changed from last time. It used to be free airflow, but um, we found that our CO2 sensor was too long and it would touch your face if it was on the side. Um, and then the left hole is free airflow and the right hole is the O2 sensor. <coughs> So the UCA mask consists of three sensors. We're using an oxygen sensor, an accelerometer, and a carbon dioxide sensor. So uh, the PSOC communicates with the accelerometer over I2C, and it communicates with both the carbon dioxide sensor and the O2 sensor over UART. And then it then, it then sends this data over BLE to the phone application. So, um, the oxygen sensor and the carbon dioxide sensor both send uh, eight, dits, eight bits of data, and the accelerometer has a high pass filter that removes uh, gravitational acceleration offset. And we then put this data into a moving average filter, and this is where we get our activity data from. And so our state diagram, our uh, design has two states. It starts off in the searching state where um, the PSOC initializes all the sensors. It puts the oxygen sensor and the carbon dioxide sensor in polling mode, which um, allows the PSOC to request data from the sensor. And it also puts the accelerometer into 2G fast read mode. And then once the phone is paired with our device, it goes into the active mode where the PSOC is actively taking data from our sensors and sending it to the phone application. So for power, we decided to go with the 9 volt battery because in uh, most uh, in hospitals before medical procedures, they uh, end up replacing the batteries before any operation is done anyway. So we decided to go with a non-rechargeable 9 volt battery to make it easier. Uh, so for our system, we need both 3.3 volts and 5 volts. So we have voltage regulators to regulate those down, to regulate 9 volt down to those two voltages. So for our overall power calculation, with a 9 volt battery, we expect a continuous runtime of about 81 hours. So this is our mobile application. Uh, it's fairly easy to use. Uh, once you open it up, it opens the screen all the way to the left. Uh, you press the scan and it also connects the device automatically for you. Uh, once it's connected, you press once more to view the live data, and then it shows the O2, CO2, and activity levels, as well as the battery life. And you can, sorry, what was that? Is that 100? Yeah, it's because it was like a brand new battery when we put it on. You know how sometimes they're a little bit higher than 9 volts. Um, yeah. And then you can press back once you've connected, and it'll disconnect the device, and you can actually reconnect multiple times. Okay, so in order to verify the mask, we did um, some testing, and the first test we did was a baseline test. This test was done so that we could have data that we could compare with our further, the further testing that we do, we could have something to compare that data to. So the baseline test was done by um, a volunteer who wore the mask for 20 minutes while sitting, and we took the data every three minutes, and from this we established uh, resting oxygen and carbon dioxide level of that user. 
Then we did a second test, which is the running test, and the volunteer ran for 10 minutes and then rested for five minutes. And this is the data for that running test, and this graph plots the difference of that data from the baseline. So once the user began running, began running, you can see that the carbon dioxide level started going up and the oxygen level started to decrease. And once the user started to rest at this point, you can see the levels go back to their resting values. So for this last test, we wanted to see if there was a correlation between level of exertion and the amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen uh, um, that your breath outtakes. So for the, uh, for this test, we had the user put the mask on and rest for five minutes to get the uh, sensors up to a baseline. Then we have the user walk for five minutes, a speed walk for another five minutes, run for one minute, and then rest for that five minutes. So then those levels, those different levels of exertion, we wanted to see the different levels of uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen. So this is the results of our test. Uh, the first five minutes, we can see a relatively sh uh, flat uh, trend there because the user isn't that the user isn't um, exerting uh, any motion or anything. Uh, for the next five minutes, the user starts walking, and we see an increase in uh, carbon dioxide and a decrease in oxygen. So when the user starts moving, we see the trend before we, we see a trend similar to the test that we did before. Uh, for the next, f uh, from minute 10 to 15, the user starts speed walking. Uh, they were walking at a speed of about 3.1 miles an hour. And again, we see a, an increase in carbon dioxide from the uh, normal walking speed. And then for this, around this 15 minute mark, we, we did a one minute, uh, it was a run, uh, and we took data every 15 seconds, and we see a dramatic increase in carbon dioxide and a decrease in oxygen. So then uh, with this data, we are able to correlate that with for a healthy person at least, uh, with more levels of exertion, we do see more levels of, con of, we do see a higher concentration in carbon dioxide and a lower concentration in oxygen. And then during the resting phase, we see the levels go back to normal. On that graph, if you click it, Indicate this oh. phases so you can see it. Right. Okay. Okay. It's Uku from UC Davis. That's just the same. Yeah. Uku is a mobile map that yeah. monitors O2 yeah. and CO2 respiration, as well as the activity levels, which often need for large tubes and equipment. Uku can be used anywhere. It can be used outside while running or it can even be used inside the doctor's office simply going up the stairs. It's a perfect device for doctors to monitor their lung resection patients before and after their surgery. And it is the first of its kind. No respiration mask allows doctors to easily and quickly take CO2 and O2 respiration data as well as activity data. as a research project for a doctor at UC Davis Medical Group. Dr. Brown would love to perform better preoperative risk assessment for her lung resection patients with the use and development of UCU. She finds current testing measures to be inconvenient and infeasible for many of her patients. Inductor. This inductor belongs to one of our two regulating circuits. 
This thing you really took it. She said, Nine feet. So she found the five volts using a switching radio array. These five volts are fed into the oxygen sensor. The PSOP is all the other two sensors are CO2 sensor and accelerometer requires 3.3 volts. So above the 5 volt regulating circuit, we have a 3.3 volt regulating circuit. This circuit also takes in 9 volts and steps down to 3.3 volts using a switching regulator. To the left of the board, you can see a large switch. This serves as an on and off switch for the entire board. To the right of that, you can see an LED. This is used to show the user when the phone has connected via Bluetooth to the mobile application. Below that, you can see the phonometer and the passes that go along with it. The rest of the circuitry is used as connectors to external boards, such as the CO2 and O2 sensor boards. The system begins in the start state. He automatically moves into the searching state where no data is being transmitted. In the searching state, the PSOC initializes the gas sensors and accelerometer. The PSOC puts the oxygen and carbon dioxide sensors into polling mode, where the sensors output data only when receiving the request from PSOC. The accelerometer is initialized by the PSOC into 2D fast read mode. Once the phone and the PSOC are paired over BLE, the system moves into the active state. The respiration and activity data are both read by the PSOC and displayed on the phone application in the active state. Once the phone application and the PSOC disconnect, the system moves back into the searching state. Any questions? Questions? Yes? Um, just, just to clarify, the, uh, the CO2 and uh, oxygen levels are taken from exhaled, right? Not inhaled, right? 